All right, so I was just about to swap out my CO2 tank, and I figured I'll go ahead and do a quick how to set up CO2 uh, video real fast, because I remember when I was first trying to figure it out, I couldn't really find anything online, uh, at least for, you know, grow settings. Uh, and the last time I messed with a big tank like this was like high school for like oxyacetylene. So, you know, out of practice by a couple, you know, decades. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and go over it real quick. Uh, nothing too complicated. So right now, super low, just above ambient because I haven't had anything in here overnight. Got this earlier today, lights just came on. When you get your tank, this is a 50 pound tank, uh, relatively, you know, next to where you're gonna set it up. It's gonna come with the cap, gonna unscrew, take the cap off. It'll come with a seal, letting you know that it's unused. Uh, I started opening it for the video because I'm trying to do this with one hand. I don't have a tripod or anything, but toss that. When you first get it, oh, let me turn it around. There we go. That's the threads. You wanna do a quick little crack. Like that, real quick, just in case there's any dust in there, it blows out so that way it doesn't get into your regulator. Uh, I have my stuff already here, but I'll go over it. I'm uh, gonna get my regulator here. Ugh. Oh, hold on. Turn it around. There we go. This is really hard to do with one hand. My regulator, this is uh, Titan Control, uh, which I actually got from a friend, because I have Manatee. That was from Amazon, it was like $40, but it stopped working. It would, it would say that it was supposed to let air out, but it wouldn't. So I think I got moisture inside of this piece. Uh, I let, I'm letting it dry out. I'm gonna try it again, but I've been using this instead. They'll come with these seals. These are like little gasket seals. Kind of like you get like the rubber ones when you get new hoses, like garden hoses. The extra one hangs on here. This one's kind of stuck on the end because it's been used so much, but you want to make sure it's sitting on the end like that. So when you butt the ends up next to each other, and then if I can manage this with one hand. Oh my God, this is hard. Hold on, let me use my other hand real fast. And then screw them on. You know, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Nothing complicated here. Let's see if I can do this at the same time. All right, get that on there. Uh, you mostly just want to hand tighten these because these fittings are brass, they're really weak. Gotta get this tank closer. Uh, tighten it. You'll probably want to tilt this back a little bit because as you tighten, it'll rotate it forward. So that way it's the gauge isn't facing towards the ground. And you want to hand tighten this as much as you can. Uh, let me see if I can use my other hand. Ugh. You may find yourself where you need to use a wrench. If you do, very, very lightly because you will strip this and you'll hit yourself afterwards. But, uh, cause it negroes your whole tank. But I mean, really the only tools you need besides your hands, your tank itself, you're gonna want a regulator. This is what your regulator is, which regulates pressure from high pressure to whatever you set it at low pressure, which is this. This tells you what's inside of your tank. Should be about a thousand PSI when we crack this. Um, this is my monitor back here, already up. Um, I have the actual monitor cord itself goes this way. I had to move it, so it's a little janky looking, but it's up here. This little graded line tells you what CO2 is. This little, is a photo cell, so it lets you know when the lights are on, so that way it knows when to turn on, because you only need it when the lights are on. So get this on here though, tighten it up as good as you can with your hand. Your other tool is soapy water, dish soap and water. You can use a bowl, I just happen to have a little squirt bottle, so I use that. This is what I was using to miss the clones. So I just put some soap in it. Uh, you wanna have this a little open, but not all the way, and crack it very, very slowly. See, I can feel it leaking around here without even doing anything. But yeah, you can hear it and feel it. I can't get it tight enough, probably because I'm trying to do this with a phone in my hand. So we're gonna go like this, and very, like when I see slightly, I mean like, as soon as you feel pressure like that, like see how little that was? Like, that hardly moved. That was like, what, an eighth of an inch? So we'll try that again. Now we know there's a crack. And then what we're gonna do is, anywhere that you know that the air, air might come out, so around this seal here, around this seal here. And if you have soapy water, I did last time with my finger, I just dripped it all around here, around here. These are probably gonna be your two big spots. And then you can check all, all of them. So this, I'm trying to get that air out of the way. You can do uh, here, here if you need to, here. 
Uh, try not to get this wet. Sorry if the wind's in here. I'm right next to the portable. I tried closing the vent, but just come in. Make sure the water is nice and soapy. Spray it on the top, let it run down. Let it run down. Okay. And I clean this off before I put it in here because you get them from like uh, welding shops or allied gas is what I got in my case. And they are filthy. All right. So this is up because the output is lit up green because we are under my set point and that's got light to it. So. This is where I want it. This little ball right there, I can twist this and make it go up or down as I see fit. Uh, you don't wanna go too high, because if you go too high, like up here of 10, it'll actually freeze this over and you'll ruin it. This is, so that, that was just taking what was left. I tighten this back up because I wanna tech this in a little bit and you know redouble check it when I got two hands but as long as you don't see any bubbles here or hear any hissing on any of your fittings you know you're good uh, obviously if your co2 never turned you know if it says it's off the light the output lights off and you're still going up then double check it you don't want to have super high co2 and have a leak or something uh, but that's that's it in a nutshell really take your cap off put it on uh, put you know screw this on hand tighten is usually nine times out of ten good I'm using one hand only so I'd use that, and you saw how small of a turn that was. You will strip these so easily, so your hands should be more than enough. Make sure this is open just a little bit. It'll go up. You never wanna, you know, if it's your first time using it, you don't wanna have this closed off completely because then it just slams the pressure in there and you risk damaging something. It may not break, but why risk it? Because you're gonna be doing this, you know, how many times are you gonna change this? Once a month maybe, if not more, if you got a bigger setup. So just a little crack, nothing too major. It'll go up. You know, set it to what you need. I set mine to two in an eight and, a, eight and a half foot by 10 foot space. And that's enough to get my CO2 levels to 1300 or 1500 PPMs within like five minutes. I don't want to go too, too fast because I want it to circulate around the room and give more of an even distribution. And if you go too slow, your plants will drink it up faster than you know, it can do it. And you know, then it can release. So a little two on the number mark. I can't remember the exact, you know, the, what it is, the, the exact measurements. I'm spacing it right now. But if you look it up, I mean, I guess it's really not important uh, if, unless you're trying to calculate it. To me, it doesn't matter. I just did it based on how fast it, it goes in the room and gives me my reading over here, which when you're setting this up, if you've never used one before, uh, this particular brand, this was 160 on, on Amazon. So as you can tell, I got most of my stuff on Amazon. These, I mean, you can pay like $500 for these sometimes. But I mean, pretty simple. You literally just hit menu, center is right there. So I would hit, okay, let me go to center, enter. And now I can choose in increments of 50 where I want my PPMs to be at. My zone, so if I go to zone, for this model, the zone lets you know how much it'll go above and below. So when I have a 100 zone for 1350, it'll go to 1450 and then it'll turn off, but it'll let it get down to 1250 and then kick back on. So that's my zone. I did have a larger zone, but as I got higher, I got the zone smaller. Um, just because I, I run CO2 basically from the time they pop out of soil, uh, you know, and increase it, start off with maybe like 800, 900 PPMs, 1200, 1300, and you know, peak flower, you're at 1500 PPMs, assuming that you're, you know, pushing PPFD and stuff as well. Uh, that's just what I do personally. Everyone's got their own little thing. Uh, obviously your situation is gonna dictate what you do, but they're pretty easy to set up. That little tree picture right there, and there's a human picture over there. Those are the two settings you can choose uh, this says like greenhouse or plant setting, and that's the one that uses the photoreceptor that only it lets it turn on when that photoreceptor I talked about is getting light because your plants only use CO2 when light's on there. Other than that, as you can tell, the little hose here, they usually come with a hose. Uh, and I like the clear hose because if the water gets in this line, you know, which will prevent it from leaking out because this can get really cold, like I said. Uh, if you have a big one, you might, you know, a big room, you might want to have like a porous hose or hose with holes in it and like zigzag it across your roof. So that way it falls down over your plants because CO2 is heavier than air. Uh, mine's not that big. So what I do is as you can tell, I just ran it back along the wall. No clips, no nothing, just real janky through this hook and then into the back of my hurricane fan. Oh, of course the fan would turn as soon as I try to show you. Hurry up, turn. There we go. And just squeezed it in between these, like just shoved it down. So that when it turns on, it just poof, it gets blown across the plants and they are loving it. So pretty easy, just simple how to. Uh, any questions, I mean, feel free to ask. 
Uh, I just didn't see any videos online really explaining it in too detail. Oh, when you plug this in, by the way, last thing is first your monitor will plug in right there and then your regulator plugs into your monitor because that's gonna tell this when to turn on and off. Otherwise, this will just stay on. And then that's where you need to know what these measurements are and you gotta like gauge it because it just never turns off. But that's that's too much work. That's a lot of math. You gotta like, you're trying to guess what they drink. Don't do that. Just get a monitor. It's worth the 160 and it'll do the work for you and then it's hands off. Easy as heck. $28 to refill a 50 pound tank. Cheap. All right, peace out guys. Have a good one.